hello today in this video we're going to be talking about circles so if you have an equation that has x squared and y squared in it chances are that you have a circle now there is a certain way that you can write an equation of a circle and that's in standard form if an equation is in standard form you're able to just look at it and tell what the center of the circle is going to be and what the radius is going to be just by looking now, if the equation is not set up in standard form, you can't do that. So the goal of this video is to take an equation that may be a circle and turn it into standard form so you can look at it and say, oh, that's the center and that is the radius of this circle. So let's get started. Okay, so we have here uh, an equation um, of a circle but it's not written in standard form. So what I'm going to do is go through the process of putting it in standard form. The first thing we're going to do is group together the families. Now we're going to have the X family, which has the X squared and 4X. And then we have the Y family, which has the Y squared and negative 6Y. Now the 12 doesn't have an X or a Y on it. So what we're going to do is take the 12 and put it on the other side of the equal sign. So I'm going to subtract it from both sides. That will make it negative 12 on the other side of the equal sign. So notice what I have here. I have my families, the X family, the Y family, and then the 12 on the other side. Now we're going to do this thing called completing the square. And this is where we take the B coefficient over 2 and we square it. So that's going to be 4 over 2 squared, which gives you 4. And so I'm going to put 4 in the parentheses with the X family. And I'm going to do the same thing with the Y family. I'm going to take the B value, which is negative 6, divide it by 2, square it, and you get 9. So I put 9 in the Y family. Now when I add 4 and 9 to the X and Y family, I have to add it to the other side of the equal sign because that is the definition of an equation. If you add something to one side, you have to add it to the other side. So let's erase this, and we're going to actually factor these two families. The x family, when we factor it, you'll get x, x in each parenthesis. I have to find the number multiply to get 4, add to get 4, that's 2 and 2. So you get the same thing when you factor it. You get two um, binomials, and they should both be the same. That way you can write them both as together as x plus 2 squared. Now, I do the same thing with the Y family. I get Y minus 3, Y minus 3 when I factor it. And again, you can, you'll can you get the same thing in each binomial, so you can write it as Y minus 3 squared. Now, combining the numbers on the other side, if I do negative 12 plus 4 plus 9, that gives me 1. So what I have here is my standard form where I can look at it and say the center is going to be negative 2, 3. Always do the opposite of what you see in the parentheses. And then the radius is going to be the square root of the number on the other side of the equal sign. So the square root of 1 is going to be 1. So we are going to do this again with another equation. And we're going to turn this equation into a standard form. So I have x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 4y and minus 1 equals 0. So like I did in the previous problem, I'm going to group together my families. I have the x family x squared plus 4x, and then I will have the y family, y squared minus 4y. Now the 1, the number negative 1 is the one thing that doesn't have an x or a y, so I'm going to throw it on the other side by adding it, so that gives me a positive 1 on the other side. Now we will complete the square. I have b over 2 squared, the b value is 4 in the x family. So 4 divided by 2, square it, you get 4. So 4 goes in the x family. And then with the y family, I get negative 4. Negative 4 divided by 2, square it, you get positive 4. So I put 4 in the y family. So I put 4 and 4, 
they need to go on the other side of the equal sign. Whatever you add to one side, you need to make sure you add to the other side. And now I'm going to factor. Now, when I factor this X family, I'm going to get X plus 2, X plus 2. But instead of writing X plus 2, X plus 2, I'm just going to do X plus 2 squared. Same thing with the Y. You're going to get Y minus 2, Y minus 2. So instead of doing that, I put Y minus 2 squared. Now, a shortcut to do this, instead of factoring, if you take the square root of the first and last term and then keep the sign of the middle, you're always going to get the correct answer. So if you do x squared, the square root of x squared, that's x. The square root of 4, that's 2. And then you put the sign that's in the middle. This is kind of like the shortcut way to factor a perfect square trinomial. It's basically what you're doing. So the center, since it's written in standard form, is going to be negative 2, 2. And then the radius is going to be square root of 9, which is 3. Okay. Now that we've done standard form, it's time to go backwards. So you can take an equation of a circle that's in standard form and go backwards and put it in a form called general form. General form is when you don't have the parentheses and everything is expanded out. So we're going to take a standard form equation and basically go backwards and put it in general form. Let's get started. What you see at the top of the page is the general form, and that's the form that we're looking for. So I'm going to start out by giving you an equation in standard form, and we're going to change it to look like general form. So this is our standard form, and when you see x plus 3 squared, that's the same thing as saying x plus 3 times x plus 3. Same thing with the y minus 2 squared. Oh, that's supposed to be a 2 y minus 2 squared is the same thing as saying y minus 2, y minus 2. So we need to actually foil these two parentheses, right? Let's multiply x plus 3, x plus 3. That means you have to foil, and you're going to get x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. And then I'm going to foil the y minus 2. That's going to be y squared minus 2y minus 2y plus 4. Now let's combine our like terms here. For the x family, it'll be x squared plus 6x plus 9. Then I put a plus sign. And then I'll have y squared minus 4y plus 4. And then on the other side of the equal sign, remember we had the 16. So now I'm working towards looking like the general form at the top, right? I have to have my x squared first, so I put the x squared first. Then I have to put the y squared. I put the y squared second. Then I have to put the x term, which is going to be 6x. Then I put the y term, which is negative 4y. And then I have a c. So I have to combine the 9 and the 4, and I get 13. But I still have 16 on the other side. If you notice in the general form, they have a 0 on the other side. So what you need to do is subtract that 16 and bring it to the left-hand side. So you have zero on the right-hand side. So our final answer is going to be x squared plus y squared plus 6x minus 4y minus 3 equals zero. And finally, we have the general form set up in the correct way. Okay, now we've completed our exploration of circles. Hope you have a good one and hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.